Jesus Christ, not this game! Just kidding, it's me, I, playing a different game productions here in the world of Europa Universalis 4 for a different look at the game, specifically at the extended timeline mod in a very specific time period, which you've already read the title, so there's no point really, like, j jerking around the bush, is there? Oh, fuck. Okay, I didn't think we'd ever stand a chance here, but, um, I, I, I might actually hit 300k before Insomnia, which is now in 10 days from this video. So, if you guys want to see me do artillery only, I'm only 10,000 subscribers away, and as usual, if you if you want to see that, hit the sub button, because, uh, if everyone that was watching the video right now hit the sub button, you get artillery only, but if I don't, if I don't hit two. 300k by uh, insomnia. I'm never doing it, and I, I literally, I'm never doing it. Good luck, you bunch of jabronis! So, unsurprisingly, the extended timeline mod for EU4 does just that. It extends the timeline beyond the game's original scope, and uh, you get to play some interesting scenarios. One of the most interesting scenarios is the Mongolian invasion. That's right, it's when the people of Finland moved over here from Asia all the way over to here in Europe. I'm just kidding, nobody would want to move to Finland. So in this game, I'll be trying to break into Europe as the Mongolians further than they did in real life. And you may be wondering how I can do that and how this game accurately represents the Mongol invasion. Well, of course, it's um, it's cheats. I I'm pretty sure IRL, the Mongols just used a cheat code, just like here. But fair play, Mod, I have no idea how else you could represent what the Mongols did. Ah, yes. Yellow shamanism. Shamanism. But for yellow people. Can't wait for the Kotaku article on that one. So before we head west, we need to take a bit of land around us so we can just get a bit built up. And we've got Genghis leading our army, so nothing terrible is going to happen. Mostly because we're really overpowered. But the way the mods got this working is that when you take a province, you actually sack it, get some ducats, a bit of prestige, and eventually the province will just flip to you, which I guess that's the only way they could really, you know, mimic the Mongol invasion. Now, a lot of you people might be saying, well, why would the province just defect to the Mongolians? That's not very realistic. The people wouldn't stand for that. Well, that's the secret. A Mongolian secret, because there's no one living there anymore. They're all dead. Oh, God, I, I have just taken this bit of land over here, but I, I completely forgot that the Tanner Tuvians are in this, but I need to take them out before they get any bright ideas. Favorite thing about this, Mars, you can have half the amount of troops the enemy does. They have a better general, but it does not matter because you have the power of yellow shamanism and the magic that is! Now that's quite the thick Mongolia. I think we're gonna finish off Korea and China here, then it's time to head west. Ah, oh, shit. Well, uh, Genghis is dead, and he's been replaced with someone I hope is equally as cool as Genghis. Uh, Mugegan Bold. Yeah, it doesn't really have the same ring to it. And you people thought the Mongolians were in advance. I just embraced scholasticism. Not entirely sure what that is, but you know what? I'm down with it. Just look how enlightened my empire is. So we've got all of China now, and I think we've got a good base to head west and... What the? Uh, Bulgaria? I know Hoi 4's uh, AI gets a bad rep, but um, it's not anything quite on the level of EU4's AI where their whole army has just completely ignored mine and gone east into my land. Uh, I I I'm sieging out your whole country here. Well, might as well start my golden era now, because in uh, 50 years or so, that great buff I'm getting for that makes my armies unstoppable, it's going to go away, and I, I, we're, we're going to collapse. Uh, we're going to collapse big time. Well, it's time to invade the Middle East, and if history's taught me anything, Baghdad is going to be completely fine. Baghdad was not fine. You know, sometimes you just gotta give credit to EE4 for all the weird shit that happens, such as the Pope and Avanon just taking out all of France. If you don't know who that is, it's this tiny little province here. Every year now, we get closer to Europe, and we only have until 1266, I believe, until our busts run out, so we really need to start bringing the fight to the Europeans. Now, just pushing into Hungary is about as far as the Mongolians actually got, but we're gonna go a bit further. Having a bit of an issue getting to the rest of Bulgaria, though, as there's this country in the way known as Hungary, and, uh, I I'm gonna need to pass through your land, Mr. Hungary. And just like normal, the AI is marching their armies away from my army, which is understandable as they have no chance of winning, and just going, hey, you can take Hungary, we'll go take Mongolia. Fair swap? I'll give them a bit of credit though, at least they know how to carpet siege now. Oh, we are thoroughly, thoroughly in Europe now, and whilst we are taking a bit of Istria over here, and I guess Austria and Italy, kind of, we might as well just cement ourselves further into Europe by fucking up Austria. Oh, Ottomans, I'm gonna make you fucking blush with what I'm gonna do that you never could. 
Interestingly enough, the more I push into Europe, the stupider the Mongolians are getting, apparently. So I'm currently snaking my way over to France for obvious reasons, and as you can see, my nomadic conquest actually ends in a couple years. So we've got five good years of conquest before it's all over and this just, you know, goes to the dogs. But before then, we need to make sure we take out France. I mean, if you wanted more proof on how the Mongolian army was the best army ever made and it's completely unstoppable even to a modern army, uh, look at this. My 10k army just smashed to 60,000 European troops there. Come on, guys. It's basic science. I'd love to see the 60,000 strong like French army in full plate mail getting absolutely shredded by these Mongolians on horseback with wooden armor. Ah, with our final conquest complete, France and the Pope has fallen to the Mongolians, but our time has come up and we have lost our nomadic conquest, which means uh, all of these things we just took, they're not gonna last. Um, they're definitely not gonna last. Interestingly enough though, I am still big and scary enough that Poland wants to become my tributary. Heck, even Sweden, whose only provinces I can see are here, want to be part of my goddamn domain. Well, the first revolts are actually kicking off in France now, but don't worry people of France, as I've left a little bit of an impact where you guys are gonna remember me forever. That's right, I've converted Paris to Tengri. Yeah, the revolts are really starting to kick into gear now, and I don't think there's any way Mr. Boyan of Ganbold is really going to have any chance of holding this empire together. Uh, yeah, yeah, no shit, honestly. Oh, I thought the Chinese might actually stick with us, but apparently there's still a hundred thousand of them alive down there to revolt. Oh, don't worry, guys, I'll do the build to force limit mission. That'll get us back on track and the empire back together. That's a lot of French people revolting. Were there even that many French people alive back then? I mean, you think this looks bad, but honestly, this is just another day in the Middle East, really, nowadays, isn't it? Ah, uh, well, there goes the first bunch of people breaking out from us, and oh, that's a lot of, that's a, that's a lot of events. I was trying to assess the damage here. We lost a lot of land. Uh, we've still got a bit in Mongolia, obviously, and a little bit in China, but most importantly, apparently we still hold the Middle East, including Mecca. Um, not really entirely sure why those guys didn't break free. I feel like they might have been one of the first, but apparently not. We still have a few holdouts over here in Europe, which is pretty interesting. We also have southern France and the Basque country. When I think of dynamic duos, I do think of the Mongolians and the Basque. And what? <laughs> we still own Vienna. How the fuck do we own Vienna? So I'm doing a bit of tag shifting round, seeing how the world's changed. And uh, apparently France has been taken out by 10 green zealots. <laughs> So I'm basically just spectating at this point, but I have noticed that now all my tributaries are declaring war on me. Uh, I don't feel like there's much Mongolia is going to be able to do, especially since we can't really get back to Europe at this point. So I've gone into Drew Denil's spectator mode to see how the world's really holding up, as Mongolia has fallen into a constant state of revolt. Uh, but more interestingly enough, uh, it's actually 1278 and the Japanese have invaded southern China. To a massive degree. Shit, this isn't even Japan that's occupying this. It's fucking Vietnam. Ah, yes, just normal Persian things where there is a 135k death stack of rebels. Did you know if you thought that was bad? Well, let me just show you the Middle East again. Because now it's not just the Mongolians I land that's revolting. It's just everywhere else. I've, I've basically done to the Middle East what the US did to it in the last few years. Oh my god. There are Swedish people in Mecca. <laughs> How did they get here? Taking a break from the Middle East, I have noticed that there's been a bit of a religious upheaval in Europe as Tengri appears to be spreading everywhere. Most importantly, Hungary and Croatia. Yeah, I think it's safe to say the Mongolians are never recovering from this as we've probably lost more in the long run than we ever gained taking that whole empire from the constant revolts to, you know, the fact we now have land in the Middle East that's also under constant revolt but not flipping away for whatever reason. It's just really got to think, was it all worth it? So yeah, I think we'll call it there for today and we can all just agree that Mongolia reaching Europe was probably the best thing that never happened. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed the video nonetheless and if you want to see me do more in E4, specifically extended timeline, there is another scenario including the fall of the Roman Empire that we can maybe look at. But if you want to see that, leave a like, hit the subscribe button and uh, let me know in the comments down below or if you have another idea. Obviously, le just leave it in the comments, let me know. Or, you know, just do the usual. Shout what Hoi 4 mod is this. Oh, uh, what artillery mod is this. Play artillery. Get some artillery IRL, I'm sorry, and shoot yourself in the face.